On today's show, we will talk about group breakers mad that their price gouging is finally being exposed. Did backyard breaks hit their second product hit in as many weeks? I bet you already know the answer to that. What's got hobby hero Jeff Wilson so mad? we will examine and a hobby shop in Minnesota that sold over 10,000 items a month on eBay is missing in action. We got to see what happened there. All that and much more on this edition of sports card radio. Uh, what's up goat is the dude who swapped the basketball pack with the Southern accent still breaking here. Saw on sports card radio. Yeah, goat. Uh, that's my boy G. Uh, it was a misunderstanding. Um, but, uh, yeah, absolutely. Still here, my friend. Uh, going strong. Okay, to start off, we mentioned a website a few weeks ago that has ruffled some feathers amongst group breakers. Break Comp is a website that compares the prices that breakers charge for products, and the breakers who are on the more expensive side of things are mad at Break Comp for exposing how much more they charge compared to others. That is a Tesla! For example, group breaker little pull man called Break Comp misleading, not accurate, and said that sometimes cheap is not always better. But when Break Comp showed Little Pole Man that the math used to calculate his totals were correct, Little Pole Man has gone missing and didn't respond. Yeah. Honestly, breakers are lucky this didn't happen many years ago. We seemingly have a price comparison website for everything. I think the travel space does this the best with the price lines, the kayaks, and other sites that aggregate the prices of flight and hotel deals. The challenge for guys like Little Pullman, who previously flexed that he traveled to the National in a private jet, is to prove to customers that it's worth spending the extra money with him. For example, I may be willing to pay hundreds more to stay in a nicer hotel compared to a Motel 6. I'm not in like a lobby of a casino, I'm in my hotel room. But what do breakers do that sets themselves apart from their competitors? Don't all breakers seemingly do the same thing? Oh my gosh. They all open the same product. They all deliver the product in the same way. What's the difference between Little Pole Man and some other random breaker? Frankly, not that much. Hopefully sites like Break Comp challenge breakers to stand out and provide a better experience for customers. No wonder guys like Little Pole Man are upset about it. They've been ripping you guys off for years. As you know, with me, it's uh, it's all about the vibes. Speaking of breakers, Backyard Breaks is back in the news. Less than two weeks after hitting perhaps the best card out of 2023 Panini Prism Football, a one-of-one -one Black Prism rookie card of CJ Stroud, the Florida boys are back to their winning ways, this time hitting a one-of-one -one Super Fractor from Bowman Chrome University Basketball of Bronny James. Lowry. Bronny Joe, oh my oh. God! Oh my God! No oh way! Oh my God! No way! Oh my God! Yo. Oh my God! No way! Oh my God! No oh way. my God! We've been covering backyard breaks routinely, getting products hits for the better part of two years. It seems like on Sports Card Radio. In the past six months, Backyard has pivoted their business model to mostly selling repacked products. You can see them in the background of the Bronny James card they pulled. The fact they aren't ripping licensed products like they used to makes the Stroud and Browning polls even more remarkable. Oh my God. In our previous topic, I asked, what's the difference between group breakers? Don't they all do the same thing? Oh my gosh. All breakers are pretty much the same, but doesn't Backyard get all the huge hits? I'm someone who doesn't participate in group breaks, but it does beg the question. Why would you break anywhere else? I am shaking. So was this latest big pull by Backyard more proof that they get funneled big hits or just another coincidence? It would be the second coincidence in as many weeks. Fellas, let's get dipping. Hobby hero Jeff Wilson is mad on Instagram that people are sharing memes about him from an account called This Cardboard Life. According to the account owner, Wilson has been sliding into the DMs of people who share the funny memes. Instead of funny, Jeff feels they are vulgar and claims that this cardboard life doesn't contribute anything positive to this hobby. I find the memes to be funny, and for me, it's a welcome break in the forever boring landscape of sports card content creation. During the pandemic, the problem was nobody in this hobby checked or challenged Jeff Wilson and others like him. Where we can be the gatekeepers. This industry let Jeff talk about sports cards like they were investments. I think that Will Greer right now is about four times better of an investment than Kyler Murray. Jeff pumped modern and ultra modern cards with little to no pushback. When it comes to Ben Simmons, I am 
buying. Just today, even, I watched two videos that praised Jeff Wilson and offered really no counterpoint even if just to be fair to the viewer. Boba Shack. Let's take Jeff Wilson's new card store that opens February 1st, Cards HQ. It's possible Cards HQ has as much success as Jeff's NFT business did. Only 20 of them sold. It's possible Cards HQ has as much success as Jeff's investment into the Dibs marketplace. I am so excited about how Dibs is going to revolutionize sports card investing. How did that turn out? Maybe Cards HQ will have struggles like 352 Marketing did. That is Jeff's marketing business that famously needed two government forgiven PPP loans to help it stay afloat during the pandemic. One of my other businesses, a web development and digital marketing agency called 352, got crushed early in the pandemic. Jeff has had normal ups and downs in business like anyone else has. What's not normal? is acting like everything he touches might turn to gold. Starstock.com. This industry has a habit of blindly trusting the biggest names in this hobby. Hello. During the pandemic, there was really no counter voice to the Jeff Wilsons, to the Gary V types, and you see where it has gotten us. Accounts like this Cardboard Life provide a valuable service to the hobby because it's at least one of the few voices willing to challenge or at least poke fun at the things that come out of Jeff Wilson's mouth. I think we're close to the bottom of the market if we're not already there. Speaking of card shops, what happened to Two Brothers Sports Cards in Minnesota? Google says their store is temporarily closed, their eBay account has gone poof, but before it happened, they received tons of negative feedback from customers who are waiting on cards. Hopefully everything is okay up in Minnesota. Hopefully all the eBay customers were able to get refunds, but this is a good example of how tough this business is. In the last 12 months, they've sold at least 135,000 items on eBay. And even with that, it looks like they still couldn't make it work. Hopefully not a sign of things to come for anyone else opening a hobby shop in the near future. TMI perhaps. But I shower with Jeff all the time. In the near future, there are tons of sports card shows coming up. Over 25 this weekend all across the United States, including a good one in Fairfield, California. I'll provide a link in the description to a card show calendar. I've been somewhat quietly amassing a fairly nice collection of cards over the last year. A couple of my favorite cards I bought recently was this 2012 Bowman Platinum Jumbo Autograph Relic Printing Plate. One of one of Bryce Harper. Hey, this card is ugly. The sticker autograph on this thing is absolutely atrocious, but it is rare. It is from his rookie season and for $497, I actually feel pretty good about it. On the other hand, this is an absolutely beautiful card. 2008 Upper Deck Heroes autograph gold card, Jim Brown, 8 of 10, PSA 9, PSA 10 on the autograph, paid $500 on card autograph. Just a really, 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 really nice card. I still do a fair amount of selling. I still have these press pass basketball boxes that I got made fun of for buying for $2.31 each. I have one at auction that ends in three days and it's already at $18. So should make some money there. Yesterday, I sold 23 cards on Check Out My Cards for $209 in total sales. That's a pretty good day over there. Let me know what you have been buying and selling lately. Join us Thursday for our live stream at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time, where you never know what the heck will happen on our live show. But until next time, we will see you right here on Sports Card Radio. Clear, clear, clear.